It's taken a really long time for Rocksteady to follow up their highly acclaimed Batman Arkham series, nine years to be precise, and it's not going well. Behind the scenes drama, angry fans, server issues, everything you'd expect to see in a highly divisive launch is here and accounted for. There's a lot of anger getting thrown around at the moment, and unfortunately, it's almost entirely justified. There is a lot to talk about with this game. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, we're gonna ask the question, just just what the hell is going on with Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League? Uh, before we get going at all, I gotta give you a spoiler warning. I'm gonna spoil the hell out of the game, up to and including the ending. If that's a thing that matters to you, the X is the thing you should probably click right now. But I think you're gonna want to stick around, because you know a game is gonna be trouble when even the previews for major gaming websites are like universally negative. Here's the thing, among enthusiast circles, the game has been a punching bag for years now. After endless delays and major leaks, which have all turned out to be pretty much spot on in their implications, people have been ready and set to hate this game. Rocksteady's previous games, the Arkham series, are highly curated single player adventures with tons of content, and not just any content, unique good content, and a bunch of creative shifts in gameplay. The stealth system upended the stealth genre, turning you from prey to predator, and the combat system was copied by just about everybody else. It cannot be understated just how influential the Arkham games were. I don't know what's more important to state, that they're easily the best Batman games ever made, or that they're some of the best games of their generation. So to go from that to an online only games as a service co-op shooter about grinding for loot and collecting daily rewards is just not what anyone wanted as a follow-up. And for a lot of people, it's not just a disappointing turn from a previously very good developer, it's a straight up betrayal. Is that a little hyperbolic? Yes. I'm not going to claim it's not, but also it's how people are reacting, and I think you can at least see where they're coming from. I mean, the name itself is enough to set people off. Kill the Justice League, the premise alone custom built to make certain people upset. This is a game where you play as the Suicide Squad, and your mission is to kill the main members of the Justice League. All your favorite heroes, Batman, Superman, the Flash, Green Lantern, you gotta kill them. It's on the tin. In my opinion, actually not a bad uh, premise for a game. Like, that has the potential to be the best boss rush of all time, right? But they explicitly say this is in the Arkham universe, and that sours a lot of people's fun. Also, the heroes are victims of mind control. Aliens are controlling them, so uh, kill them. They're evil now, but they're not really evil, but you still gotta kill them. Go ahead, kill them. And I'm not gonna say this premise could not have worked with a deft hand at the writer's desk, but uh, you'll get what I'm alluding to in a moment when I get into the story. Uh, unless we get a full-on expose of just what was going on behind the scenes, we just don't know why the game turned out the way it did. We know the game had a rocky development. Hell, the two founders of the studio, Jamie Walker and Sefton Hill, left the company in 2022 while the game was still being worked on. When the founders leave the studio, that's, that's, that's kind of rarely a good sign. But they didn't just leave, they left mid-development of the game, and, and the warning lights come on there uh, if they come on anywhere. On top of the internal drama that was reported on, the studio suffered a number of high-profile leaks that all but spoiled the entire story well before the game even came out. Most of the time, these leaks sort of lead to misunderstandings, misinformation about what a game's story actually is, but Suicide Squad, uh, no. Everyone was right to not like what they were seeing. Uh, because of the live service nature of the game, basically the entire story is told through long, not great cutscenes. This isn't like Arkham where major story events happen in the game. Everything story related outside of boss fights is told through cutscenes. So it's easy to piece together the story without missing a lot and the result is not great. Then after all this, something happened that nobody could have anticipated. Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman, uh, not just from the Arkham games previously, but also from the animated series, he died tragically in 2022, which made the game one of his final roles, uh, which a, a murderous mind controlled Batman who gets clowned on and insulted by the Suicide Squad is not the best way to go out. So it made it so the story wasn't just bad in people's eyes. In a lot of ways, it felt disrespectful and an insult to the character Conroy played for about 30 years. Here's the thing. I don't know that this controversy would be quite as fervent if they weren't trying to sell this game as a follow-up to the Arkham games. If this was some kind of standalone thing about an evil Batman, 
There'd be some people griping about it, but like this is canon to the Arkham timeline. I think if it hadn't been, the negative voices wouldn't have been quite so loud. Uh, but there is a lot of negativity surrounding this game. So much so that it makes you think it can't possibly be that bad, right? This is Rocksteady we're talking about. These guys know what they're doing. This is not the same Rocksteady that made the Arkham games, though. On the first day of Early Access, which was only available to people who dropped 100 bucks on the Ultimate Edition of the game, go figure, the entire game was inaccessible for most of the day because of a bizarre bug that started new players off with 100% completion. The devs were already on the defensive. They gave $20 of in-game currency as compensation so players could buy costumes. Some of these bundles can cost up to $40, and the game gives you no way of earning currency or store items in-game. So they're already not off to a great start. They're also not providing review codes to most major websites, and that's not a good sign. I mean, sometimes you get a Doom 2016, which also didn't do that, and it turns out to be, like, a total banger. Some lunatic in the marketing department is like, let's make people think it's gonna be bad, and then it's awesome. And it works, because it's awesome. Uh, I'll go ahead and say, I don't think that the marketing industry is usually filled with creative lunatics like that. And most of the time, withholding codes like this, is is it's because the publisher doesn't have a lot of confidence in the game. Here's the thing, though. The game I played wasn't a total disaster, but it's a pretty disappointing one. It's got a lot of controversial elements that are sure to rile up both Batman fans, superhero fans in general, and here's the real kicker in my opinion. Anyone who respects good game design. I'm one of these people who doesn't care about canon. Like, if you want to tell an interesting story and it breaks canon and does something even disrespectful to characters, I'm cool with that if it works. Uh, but it doesn't work. But even if we can't bank on that, a game with good game design that is fun, I don't care. Sadly, this is a game that has not one, not two, not three, not even four. Do you want me to keep counting? I'm not going to. I I'm just going to say how many. Seven. It has seven main story missions where you defend a car wh while it slowly drives down a road and enemies spawn in and attack it. I want to reiterate, this is not the Rocksteady that made the Arkham games. I don't know what kind of staff is turned over there, but uh, it ain't the same company. Now, I will say in terms of control and world design, Rocksteady still knows what they're doing. The minute-to-minute -minute gameplay feels pretty good, and the small chunk of Metropolis this game takes place in is fantastic and is full of these cool little details, but everything else feels lacking because the game's focus is being an open-world loot grinding mill. The entire story is basically one long tutorial for the end game, and by the time the credits roll, the entire Kill the Justice League premise feels like an afterthought. It's a game that could have easily just been its own thing, but it really lays it on thick with the arc references right from the start. The entire intro to the squad is an extended riff on the opening to Batman Arkham Asylum with the same shots, same music, everything. Later on, one of the best sequences in the game, might I add, has you sneak through a Batman museum with callbacks and references to all the Arkham games, and it does a pretty good job recapping the plot. The game wants to make it 100% clear that yes, this is the next game in the Arkhamverse. It is legitimately interesting to finally see what happened to Batman after the teaser at the end of Arkham night but then you remember that oh yeah the batman everyone likes is an alien zombie now and he's got to die it's great hearing kevin conroy in the role again and it's actually kind of amusing seeing him ham it up as a villain but some of his scenes have really set people off and let's be clear here the treatment of Batman isn't the only part of the story making people mad. It's pretty much the entire Justice League. Uh, they all have awkward, ignoble fates that are bound to rile up a fanboy or two, but Batman really gets at the worst. There's a scene where we get the double whammy of him giving a heartfelt message to the rest of the Bat family about how to defeat him and his friends if they turn evil. And the Suicide Squad laugh at it and fast forward through the message. And oh yeah, you can see Robin's bloody mask on the floor, implying that Batman killed his adopted son Robin. It's like Likely the rest of the Bat family are dead too, meaning his own protégés couldn't beat Batman, but you four idiots somehow managed to do it. After you engage Batman in a horror segment that goes on too long, after you beat Batman with the game's weirdly anticlimactic battle, you haul his knocked out body over to the Earth 2 version of Lex Luthor, which by the way, this universe is 
version got his heart ripped out by the flash it's just another one of these games shocking for its own sake scenes that doesn't really amount to a lot so you put batman in a shrink ball and you can play catch by throwing him to other suicide squad members because uh, funny i guess that's funny and then in luther's lab batman starts to say the iconic stuff from the opening to batman the uh, animated series before getting poked uh, with a needle and making a cartoon falsetto noise a better written game could probably pull off this kind of dark comedy tonal whiplash but uh, a better written game it's not the other most infamous scene is probably batman's death the squad take batman to the park as bait to confront superman they banter for a bit nothing all that interesting is said and harley shoots batman in the head like i'll say this again it, it doesn't necessarily bother me personally as badly but i get why it bothers people you played as him in the three other games and oh yeah it's batman we're not really super used to seeing Batman take a bullet to the brain and having it actually mean something beyond you did the action sequence incorrectly and have to start over. I, I don't really know what the tone is supposed to be here. Is it sad? Is it funny? Is it, I mean, it is shocking, but maybe not quite as bad as when Captain Boomerang whips his dick out to pee on the Flash, which by the way, happens. And also everyone compliments him on the size of his dick, which nice. Um, what the hell is going on here? Of course, it's it's also likely that none of these characters are actually dead in terms of the game's story. There are just enough clues here to suggest that they're all still alive somehow, either kept alive by Brainiac or they're clones or they're replaced with alternate universe doubles or some crap like that. It just doesn't fix the not funny and awkward death scenes. Even if it gets undone later in DLC, we still had to watch a scene where Batman gets shot in the head on a park bench and it's not really played for laughs or for pathos like it seems to not really matter and that's the weirdest part about it at that point it just seems kind of like they're trying to wrap things up overall the story is a mess and that's where all the easiest outrage comes from but it's hardly the only problem the game that fans are pointing out another issue is well the graphics i'm not going to come out and say that this is an ugly game it can look pretty damn nice sometimes even and on playstation 5 at least it runs silky smooth but when you directly compare certain aspects of it to arkham knight it's tempting to wonder what the hell they've been doing the last nine years like arkham knight came out in 2015 that is nine years ago that's almost a full decade and it holds up extremely well the rain-soaked city streets still look amazing now today the character models still look great you can clearly see there's a difference in technology when you compare the facial animation uh, in Arkham Knight to Suicide Squad, but the differences are not so distinct in a lot of other ways. Uh, take, for example, a panning shot at night. In Arkham Knight, the world is vibrant and beautiful at night, while in Suicide Squad it just feels barren and empty, a flat gray color tinted city. During the day, the city looks much, much better, but ironically, it actually gets uglier and uglier as the game progresses. It's cool to see the city transform from a modern metropolis to a dusty post-apocalypse disaster area, but the end result is you take a beautiful city and make it ugly. Also, the idea of ugly here is kind of bland, just just a uh, brown and gray and PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 era-ish. Not necessarily in terms of quality, but definitely in terms of color palette. It's not something I want to focus too much on because for the most part, this is actually a good looking game. But if you're making the follow up to what's one of the best looking games of all time, still a decade after its release, you're going to get comparisons. And with this game, they are just not always flattering. And you know, you've probably been waiting to say this because I me you know this was coming if there is one thing that really truly drags this game down it's the live service element it's why the gameplay has been flattened out into a shooter where most of the game is played by completing these basic multiplayer style objectives in a small open world map the story negatively affected as well the need to sell the end game to the player completely undermines the narrative in one of the most bizarrely terrible finales i have ever experienced uh so i mentioned you use batman to lure out superman right well after that you beat superman and the game immediately just jumps into introducing the actual villain behind the whole evasion, Brainiac. But instead of setting up the epic finale, where you infiltrate the mothership and take this guy down once and for all, the game just stops all the momentum of the story to sell you on the end game. Seriously, my jaw was on the floor when this was all happening. Your bird Falcon hates live service shit, right? Hate it. I hate it. And even I was kind of amazed by this. 
You might be able to expect I've seen quite a bit of live service shit at this point. Like, they don't just sell you on the end game. The end game effectively nullifies all of your actions going forward. And I, I just have to say this. It's almost like they put effort into making it bewilderingly bad. So before you even fight Brainiac, you find out that beating Brainiac is pointless because there's 13 of these guys in different universes. So killing one of them doesn't matter. Now, in an actual story, this would be a bluff or you and your plucky heroes would come up with some way to defeat him once and for all. But this is a live service game, so there's got to be an end game. So enjoy endlessly grinding those Brainiacs right at the finish line. The game removes all the stakes, all the tension from the story and replace it with the dawning realization that this is what they expect us to keep doing in perpetuity. This is the service that you are intended to live in, the live service. It makes the entire final story segment feel completely hollow and the epic final showdown with Brainiac number 13, it's just the flash again. That's how they chose to uh, end the game, with a total whimper. Most live service games still manage to have a satisfying enough story. I mean, hell, even the Avengers game had a proper boss and an ending, but this game does not even clear that low, low bar. They seriously expect there to be six distinct seasons with two new Brainiacs each to fight. Will Rocksteady even be around that long? I don't know, but one fight with this guy, that is enough for me. Suicide Squad is a game running at cross purposes. For people who just want to grind repetitive missions with their friends, there is some fun to be had here. The movement powers are all pretty great, and the combat generally does feel good to play, but it's not enough, and it's definitely not Arkham. Beyond that, it has this story, which gets in the way anytime you feel like you're starting to have fun, which is rare because even good gameplay is boring as hell when there's no reason. And that's what my problem with live service games is, and it's what the problem with this game is, in my opinion, at least. People looking for a proper follow-up to Rocksteady's Arkham games are just gonna get mad. There's a bunch of strange story choices here, uh, and it also obviously doesn't play like an Arkham game. There's some small elements there, and there's even some story things that allude back to the Arkham games that, you know, I don't hate. But like the game doesn't even have a real ending. It's a bizarre game that mostly left me wondering how this took nine years to make. Development had to have been rebooted multiple times. That's the only explanation why this brief 10 or so hour story with a pretty small open world and limited gameplay loop took so long. Even after playing it to completion, I am still wondering what the hell is going on with Suicide Squad. I'm sure this is a game that will have its defenders. Like I said, some elements of the gameplay are actually pretty good. And beyond that, it's just a really divisive, high profile game. So that's gonna happen, but in my opinion, it's just undeniably flawed. As far as live service games go, yeah, there's worse out there, both in terms of monetization and gameplay, but this isn't the game that fans want. Like there's a reason people love the Arkham games. Some will say it's the story, but I'm gonna argue it's not just the story. And given the fact that so many live service game studios are reporting huge layoffs and not getting it very good earnings, failing to meet expectations, it seems like Rocksteady is anchoring themselves to a sinking ship. I hope that's not the case because nobody wants to see people lose their jobs and, and for like this of all things, but Rocksteady could have avoided this if they didn't make or rather weren't forced to make a live service game because you have to imagine somebody shoved this down their throats, right? All we wanted was a single player Arkham follow-up. That's all you had to do, guys, and it's probably all they wanted to do. And yet, here we are. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is a course of subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.